since you worked so closely on set, do you and Tom still hang out? All the time. You know, he happens to live in L.A. too. And, you know, we've been social distance hanging in the backyard. Yeah, I figured as much. That's exactly what I had in mind. I'll Tom and Jerry dead. are about to start over. Because that's what friends in the big city. I was wondering if on a set like this, you ever, ever feel the urge to adjust jokes or improv new stuff? Um, I mean, it was a good group of actors, you know, like we, we liked trying things out on set and Tim's story was very encouraging of us to sort of find other things in the moment and, and at least try them. I mean, that's the nice thing about when you're filming something versus SNL, SNL's live. so. There's a limit to how much you can try on the fly um, because, you know, you, you might not get caught on camera or it may mess up other things in the show. So this was really, it was fun. And, and I think we found a lot of comfort, like with Chloe, with Michael Pena, Rob Delaney. I mean, Pena made me laugh so hard. Enjoy while it lasts, cause... So there's so many takes, I'm sure, where are unusable because I'm, I'm just laughing. And there's so many takes that are unusable. He would make fun of me so much, I would just walk into a scene completely miss my mark and i was like out of focus for the whole take i'd have like a long speech completely out of focus and he would just stand there knowing and just laugh at me and knowing not interrupt me not stop me let me do the whole thing out of focus because that's how much he wanted to make fun of me about it oh uh, yeah congratulations teamwork is dream work right i talked to jost yesterday and he said that he had a hard time keeping a straight face with you on set. I was wondering if that's like something you ever intentionally do, try to get your co-stars to break. Is that a part of the process? No, but for me, I don't know why, but if I feel like I, I'm touching on something that could potentially make me laugh, um, you hope that that will make another person laugh as well. And sometimes you do try to break it, depending on the, on the scene. Jost is a funny guy. I mean, he's yeah. just a really funny guy. Um, you know, I went golfing with him a couple of times and I was like, even the stuff that he just normally says without trying to be funny, he's one of those, I mean, he did go to Harvard, you know, he's a smart guy. What was it like acting alongside so many characters that were not in the room with you? Um, you, the best scene partners a girl could ask for. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a lot of fun kind of trying to figure out the, uh, the technicality of that and, and, and what that would feel like and what that would look like. Oh, wow, this is so detailed. And it, it really, um, honestly, has changed and shaped me as an actor even now. It, I think it really uh, put me to the test, and it, it was a bit of a, a, you know, acting gymnastics after a while. You rode in on a giant animated elephant. What is that like being on set with something that's not there? How did you guys even pull that off? Well, the good thing is I have no experience with a regular elephant, so I have no comparison. I wasn't like, this doesn't feel real or, <laughs> um, but you're on a weird green box and just, it was set up with a crazy, uh, um, like, uh, automatronic thing, uh, animatronic, whatever it is, but it was like a huge, like gyrating box and it's like whipping around and you're like, so hop on, but we got you. And, and you know, if it's ever too much, just tell us, you know, and you're like, oh God, this is like how every set injury starts. There's a bar in New York that has a bowl, like a mechanical bowl that we'd sometimes go to, um, like after the show at SNL and, and make each other try to ride the bowl. And that was, this was the closest experience to that. Um, except I didn't have the satisfaction of watching Michael Che get thrown off of it. That's, that'll be the new wave in cowboy bars and mechanical elephant. I will not let this hotel be ruined by a cat and a mouse. Uh, I'm curious when casting news like Tom and Jerry is announced, does Che or anyone write update jokes to prod at you about it? <laughs> I think he'll wait, he'll wait to see the film before he writes some jokes about me. Um, You're gonna get me murdered. <laughs> he thought it was cool. Like he thought it was, he, you know, he liked Tom and Jerry. I, I liked Tom and Jerry growing up too, you know, so. It's it's amazing people came up to me, we were filming in London and people came up in London, which I didn't even, I wasn't even aware how much of a thing it was in London. And people came up and they're like, oh my God, you're in Tom and Jerry. You're, and you, and like, there were scenes where I was holding Spike, the, you know, the dog in it. And they were like, I can't believe you're, you get to be Spike's owner, you know? And I was like, oh, I never really considered in the <laughs> Tom and Jerry cinematic universe that that would be a big deal to people. But it made me feel like, uh, oh wow, I really made it. I'm Spike's owner. 
<laughs> That's cool. They have a UK market for that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, who knew? I, I mean, again, when you grow up, you have no idea. People from Australia, you know, and they're like, I love SNL. And I was like, whoa, you get it? That's crazy. I did interviews with you for the Adams Family. I was wondering if it's exciting to you uh, being able to take a, a fresh spin on all of this nostalgic material. Definitely. You know, I think I've, I've really had some luck to not only, you know, take a fresh spin on these iconic pieces of, of you know, IP, but to really be able to be a part of projects that the people creating and recreating are as much in love with the original pieces as, as I am. Um, so they're handled with delicate care and so much respect um, and not trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, they, they, they know that it's kind of a, a perfect machine and to uh, fit a new story within these characters that we love so much, you know, and to, to not, not change it too much. Did you grow up on the cartoon? And is that part of the reason you wanted to take it on? I did. Um, you know, I grew up in Chicago, so um, we used, my brother and I went to this school that was <laughs> across the street from Cook County Jail. It was awesome. Um, and we, we would, you know, we would run to the, to the, uh, to the bus and, uh, and make sure that we were able to, to get the bus in time for Tom and Jerry. We, we used to watch it all the time. Are there any other nostalgic properties maybe from your childhood that you would like to see rebooted? Uh, yeah, I mean... The wacky racers would be really fun, you know what I mean? I I I'd love to to get into something like that. Is wacky racers is that Hanna Barbera? Yeah, that that is a whole new world that needs to be explored right there. I, I really genuinely think it could be an incredible option. I mean, it's something that I, I I've spoken about with with some of the people over at WB, and I would just I would love to 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 make that a reality because I think you could make it so cool and so progressive and so forward and kind of make it this really treacherous race towards some some really uh, crazy landscapes. Is there any other uh, old uh, cartoon property you have in mind that you would like to reboot reboot in the future in the same fashion? Oh wow, um, you know what I I I was if they could do this properly like uh, not live action but like an actual. Um, I would love to see the Thundercats. Do you remember Thunder, Thunder, yeah. Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats? All right, 2024 Thundercats reboot with Michael Pena. Congratulations, man. I think I might have just pulled this off. Really? We blowing up the whole thing. Everybody in the bouncy house going bouncy, bouncy, bouncy.